Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to create a poster on Photopea and I'm going to take inspiration from the graphic designer Ollie Moss. So if you have a look at Ollie Moss's work, you'll see that quite often he uses images within images. So for example, he might use a silhouette of a character or a particular object and then he'll place more images inside of that shape. So we're going to do something similar in style. We're going to go to photopea.com and it should look like this. It's very similar to Photoshop, but it's free. So we want to create a new file. If we go to File and New and give your file a name. And since it's a poster, I'm going to choose Print, A4 Size and Create. So it is important to save as you go because it's an online platform so we want to make sure we've saved it to our device in case we accidentally close a tab or lose um, a connection. We'll go to save as PSD because we want to save it in a format that means if we close it down we can open it up and still access all of the different bits we've been working on and continue to make changes to it. I'm going to go to show in folder here just to check where it's saved. It will usually pop up at the bottom of your screen and I can see it's saved in my downloads. So I'm just going to cut and paste it into the folder where I'd like to save it. Okay, so this is our file, but what you will notice is that when you go to file, it doesn't allow you to save at this point. So all we need to do is just close this down and reopen the file from wherever it is on your device. Just move this out of the way. And that means now that it knows where to save it on your device, you can click save as you go. So, what we need to do now is bring in all of our images that we're going to use. So you could go to open and place and that would place the images directly onto your background here. But what I'm going to do is just go to open because I want them to open as separate files that I can work on and move over to my poster when they're ready. So you choose whichever images you'd like to use and you'll see them open up as separate files along the side. So first of all, you want to decide which image will be your overall shape to contain the other imagery within your poster. Now I think I'm going to use this flower here. So the first thing I want to do with this is isolate it from its background so I can use the shape of the flower on its own. Now there are a few different ways you can do this. If you go to this little symbol here, you'll see you've got object selection, quick selection and magic wand. Those are all different ways that you could select an object. Now object selection works well if the object is very different in colour and tone to the background. So this should work because the flower does look very different to the background here. Okay, so as you can see, it has selected the edges of the object and there's a little bit there that's not quite right. So I'm going to go to Refine Edge up the top here. And this is where you can just fine tune it a little bit to make sure you get exactly the bits you need. You can choose black and use this to delete parts of the image, white will add them back on and grey will fine tune the edges for you. So I think I'll zoom in a little bit and just look at this section here because I'm not too happy about the yellow remaining and I'll bring my brush size down a little bit, maybe a bit more. Okay, so now I can use the black to go in and remove parts of it. And if you see, 
the image on the right hand side, that shows you how it will appear um, once you actually press OK and the background has disappeared. What I'll do, since the edges are a bit difficult to get right, I'm going to go over with the grey. And it should automatically help to find the edges of the object here. And I might go back in with my black a little bit as well here. Oops. So if you do too much, you can go to white and you can add that bit back on. And you just need to keep an eye on the right hand to side as you go. Okay, so you could spend quite a while if um, you want to get things really, really accurate and detailed, but since it's just an overall shape, I'll just leave it like this just now and zoom out just to check everything else looks okay. And if you want to move it about, you can use the hand tool when you've zoomed in as well to look at different sections. So click OK once you're happy with it. And as you can see, it's created a new layer here and within that layer, the flower is here by itself without the background. So I want to select it again so that I can take it over onto my poster. Now I could do my object selection again. I'll just show you how you could do one of the other ones as well. You could use magic wand and click on an area. Now, the magic wand finds areas that are similar in colour as well and tries to get all of those areas within the image selected. But as you can see, it's a bit complicated, the flower, so it's not been able to do it very well. So if you want to deselect, to select and deselect or press Ctrl and D at the same time, another way to do it is to click the outside area. And as you can see, it's now selected all of the background because the background is all the same in the sense that it has nothing there. So if we want to change that, so we're now selecting the flower, if we go to select inverse, it will now select the opposite of everything we selected initially. So we can copy this by going to edit and copy, or you can click control C at the same time as a shortcut. And I'm going to go to edit and paste. You can also use control V and oh, as you can see I'm still on select object there so I want to just deselect and go to my wee arrow here and that means I can move things about. If I click transform controls I can resize it. So I'm holding down shift as I do this because I want the ratios to be the same but you can stretch it and make it wider and taller and things as well and you can move it about and rotate it. So I think I'll leave mine like this just now and click away from the controls. And what we want to do is make this shape the gap for using the other imagery. So we're going to use our paint bucket tool, which is this one here, and you can select a colour so I think I quite like this pale green colour as part of my colour scheme. Once you've hit the paint bucket tool, just click on the background and the whole background will be that colour. 
and then we want to select the object again. So I think I'll go back to object selection because that worked quite well for this one. Now you'll notice it's saying image analysis here, so that just means we need to wait a few seconds while it does its thing. Okay, and now that I've selected the flower, I'm just going to click delete. And the other way you could do that is to go to edit and cut and deselect. And we now have a lovely gap in the shape of a flower that we can use to start our poster. So the next thing I want to do is bring in some imagery. I'm going to start by adding a textured background. We'll just wait till it does its analysis and then we can select part of this. Okay, so I've just used my rectangle tool to select. I'm going to click Control C to copy. Go back to my main file, Control V to paste. And you'll see that it has gone on top of my main poster section. So all you need to do there is if you have a look at your layers, whichever layer is at the top of the list will be the one that is in front. So if I move that down, to underneath the green one, it'll now show behind it. So you might want to use a textured background like this if you've painted up some paper with different mark making techniques, for example, or instead of that, you could simply go into your background, use your paint bucket tool and create a color to appear in the background there. So I've got my textured background in the back there and I want to start bringing in some imagery. So I think I'll start with this image of the glass house. Now this is a pen drawing but I think it looks a little bit washed out so there's lots of things you can do to change up your images. You can add filters and change the colours. I think for this one we'll go to image, adjustments and brightness and contrast. I'm just going to make it a little bit darker bring the contrast up a little bit, just so it looks more solid Building. Okay, so when you have your image in, it's definitely worth going to image and adjustments and having a look at all of these options, try some of them out and see if there's any changes you'd like to make to your image. Okay, so what we want to do with this now is remove the white background and I'm going to use this crop tool here just to delete the bits that I definitely don't want to start with because I probably won't need the whole image and then you could use your object selection so I'll just zoom in a little bit first wait for it to do its image analysis. Now I just press Control and the plus sign to zoom in but you can also do that in the menu here. So if you select an object and then click this little symbol which has the two white circles it means that you can keep selecting more objects as you go. So an image like this, this can work quite well and can hit delete or go to edit and cut. Now I think magic wand could work quite well for this one as well so I'm going to click magic wand, click on the white and see if I can just select all of the white so that'll be it's a little bit grainy in some of these areas here. I'll maybe try it the opposite way and select the black. That's better so since it's not the black that I want to cut but everything other than black I'll go to inverse hit delete and that's us left with the image and it's got some little greeny sort of bits in it but I think I quite like that to give it a slightly rougher look to it. So deselect that and select our black area again. Control C to copy back to your poster, Control V to paste it back in. And you can see it's actually 
arrived just where I wanted it between this pink layer and the green layer. Now, if you ever find yourself accidentally selecting things, you might just have kept yourself on one of these tools. So it's always a good idea just to go back to the arrow and then you can see we can move this about. We can go to our transform controls and we can rotate it. can resize it and move it around a little bit. And maybe go for about there. So I'll deselect this just now and we'll look at the next thing that we want to bring in. So the next image I'm going to use is this drawing of a flower and again we want to remove the background. So you can try your different tools to see which works best. Magic wand would work for this one. Now you'll notice it's again it's a wee bit complicated but what I meant to mention earlier is if you change the tolerance, if it's really low tolerance it will be very sensitive about what it picks up, but if you make the tolerance much higher oops, and let's deselect and then try it again it starts to pick up more as it goes but it's still a wee bit complicated this image so let's try and use one of the other options since the background itself is very different to the flower object selection should work quite well for this one. There we go, so it's picked up the flower. There are just a couple of bits again, so you can refine your edges to fine tune those little bits. So Again, it's black to remove sections. And you can use your grey. It's a little bit bigger to go over the edges. Just need the other bit I noticed over here. So we'll let to move. And key to go over our edges. taken a wee bit from behind there so I'll just take my white and make sure that bit's not cut out. Okay so like I said before you could spend a long time you could zoom right in and go very precise to the edges but I think this will do for what I need just now so we'll click OK and let it do its analysis and then we want to select the object again didn't quite work, let's try that again there we go Control c to copy Control v to paste and we will 
resize it a bit, move it about, about where we'd like to have it in the image. Now I think I'll change the colours a little bit because it's a bit off compared to my background so we'll go to adjustments, hue and saturation and this is quite useful if you have an image that isn't colour, if it's just a pencil drawing you can use this to add colour if you click colourize and play about with the hues. So we'll make it a bit more saturated, a bit brighter and make it a bit that colour works fine and you can make it lighter and darker as well I think I'll go darker just a little bit and you can also at this point you might want to play about with filters in one of your images so if we have a look at the filter gallery you can see there are lots of different ones you can choose. This one is maybe a bit much. Let's try one of the other ones. I quite like this one. Okay, so we'll use this as our filter. And I think we need a little bit more, so I'm going to copy this image. So if we right click on the layer, you can duplicate layer. If you're using your phone, you won't be able to right click, but you can go up and click layer and duplicate in the options there. And our copy has now appeared. And I think I'd like to make this one into a bit of a silhouette. So I'm going to go to adjustments, hue and saturation, and make it super dark. Click OK. And then make it a color. So as with the background, you can just use your paint bucket for any sort of blocked area of colour and change it. Can we this a little bit smaller as well? And I'm going to move it down just so it's slightly behind the other flower and create a copy again. We've got another one and I'll change the colour of this one, make it a bit darker still. And I don't really like that being in front of my glass house, so I'll bring it down and go for that at the moment. Maybe turn it around so they're not all the same angle. Okay, so let's say that's how we want our imagery to be just now. The next thing we want to do is to add some text. Okay, so I'm just going to save before I go any further. And then to add text, if you click on this T for type and draw a box for yourself, you can type into this here. Uh, you can change the size. If you can hardly see your text, it might just be tiny, so you might need to select it and change the size, or it might just be that you are in a lower layer and you need to move it up. I think I'll make this slightly bigger. And you can change the colour by clicking on this box here. You can choose your colour from the palette here or you can take your mouse over to your image and choose a colour within your image. The other thing you can do is warp the text. So you can choose a shape, maybe an arc, and you can play about with how bendy it is. And then you can use your arrow to move it about as well and you can also click transform controls 
to resize it at this point if you want to as well. So I'm just going to add some more text at the bottom. And the other thing you can do is go to layer and layer style to add different effects to your layer. For example, you could use a gradient. You can pick your colours for that here. And I'll just copy this layer, I'm going to duplicate layer, and to edit your text you can click the T or you can just double click into it. And move it about like so. Maybe just change the colour of this one. Okay, so that's us got our first development now, our first poster idea. And we're going to save it again just to make sure you've got your up-to-date version saved as a PSD. And then the next thing you can do is export as a JPEG. And that means you'll be able to save it just as a flat image that would be much easier for shading and for printing. So we'll set your quality to high and click save. And then you'll notice, um, again, it probably goes into your downloads. So you just click and show in folder. And that means you've got one version that you can go back in and edit and you can move things around and change them a bit to create another development piece. And you've also got one that can be easily shared and printed.